Hey guys, Geeky here, and we are back with another episode of The Breakfast Club. We are on episode 6 of 12. The school bully targets Brian, and it's up to you to figure out how he can avoid getting pummeled. So, let's see. I'm kind of like oh, another like Brian-centric episode, but we'll see. Hopefully this is still good. Hopefully it's not like, you know, forced decisions where we're forced in to Brian, um, are we, uh, network connection. All right, here we go. It's Monday morning. Okay, guys, I love this. Like, if you're into fanfic, I don't know, this was like a big thing, the Monday after school, you know, after detention. So this is good. It's Monday morning. As you enter the bustling hallways of Shermer High, you reflect back on this past Saturday. Detention. Stubby's party? Will the friendships you form survive the harsh reality of high school? All eyes are on you as you sift through the hop through the packed hallway. Students wave, nod, and flash you thumbs up. Okay, yes, we're cool, we're cool. Rogers crosses your path and offers an enthusiastic high five. Okay, I'm liking this, I'm envisioning this. Okay, I'm walking down the hallway. People are like, what's up, high five. <laughs> Hey Bailey, up top. Okay, I don't like Rogers though. Like the face, I can't get over it. Uh, sure thing. You spot Brian waiting by your locker and duck through the crowd toward him. Are Mondays usually this cheery around here? Like what, we're brand new? Did we start on a Friday and get detention? What is happening? Nope, they're just excited to see you. Word spread that you're the one who soaked the cops at Stubby's party. I just turned on some sprinklers. Yeah, but thanks to you, nobody got arrested. And the party kept kicking at Roger's place till dawn. What? I guess you're Shermer's hometown hero. What? How's it feel? Um, don't forget by tomorrow, I'm ready, I'm ready for my close-up. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a natural born star. You strike a dramatic pose, yes. Brian gives a half-hearted laugh. Oh, what's up with Brian? Just promise not to forget me when you're famous. Ah, I kind of figured that's what it is, like with him being kind of nerdy, and now I'm about to be popular. <laughs> You notice Brian rings the cuffs of his sweater ner nervously as his eyes dart around the hallway. Everything okay with you? Now that you mention it, no. Stubby found out I broke his face. How did he find out? Now he's gonna kill me. Oh, Brian. His voice cracks in desperation. What are we going to do? <laughs> what are we gonna do? What do you mean we? <laughs> I really <laughs> Guys, I wanna say what do you mean we? Because like I told him not to break it. Um We're not gonna fight fire. <laughs> My first instinct is what do you mean we? But I guess we're supposed to be friends, so I'll say we'll get help. Relax. We'll get some help. Maybe Claire or Andrew can talk Stubby down for you. They've all been friends for years. They've never sighed with me over him. Sweat forms on Brian's brow as he struggles to breathe. Panic attack. It's hard to watch. Okay, okay, I'll help you. Just promise you'll pull yourself together. You know, I was hopeful when you said we'd all be friends on Monday. But I don't think the social rules are going to change that easily. A breeze cools your shoulder as Vernon hustles past. He clips Brian's shoulder and abruptly turns, pointing a finger in Brian's face. Watch yourself, Johnson. Guess this guy. Vernon dusts off his sleeve and continues on his way. You see? How can things change when a guy like him runs the place? Look, what if we... Slam, is this Bender? You're cut off by the sound of a fist bashing into a locker behind you. 
You spin around and find yourself overshadowed by Stubby's massive frame. His girlfriend Becky stands beside him, filing her nails. Look who it is, Tweedledee and Tweedledork. Oh, hey, Stubby, solid party this weekend. Can it, Poindexter? I know you broke my mom's ming, minge. A thin, terrified wheeze escapes from Brian's mouth. Becky looks up from her nails just so long enough, just long enough to roll her eyes. Ming, babe, not minge. Oh, right. You broke my mom's main face, Johnson. Oh. Brian goes catatonic. You step in to help. What makes you think it was Brian? Uh, we all saw him get humiliated and run out of the room on Saturday. Then right after, we found the vase. Yeah, it's not rocket surgery. It was an accident. Have you tried gluing it? Maybe you broke it. Maybe you broke it. Maybe you broke the vase, Stubby. And you're just scared that your mom's going to find out. Quit messing with my head. And don't you ever talk about my mom. Stubby presses closer, forcing you and Brian against the lockers. Students have started to notice and stop in their tracks to watch. Guys, there's got to be a better way to solve this. To the right, you spot Andrew goofing around with Rogers by the water fountain. To the left, you see Claire checking her makeup in the mirror on her locker door. Both are oblivious to Brian's predicament. (sighs) Call out to Andrew. I'd love if Andrew weighed in on this. You shout Andrew's name loud enough to pull his attention away from Rogers. He glances up and only notices Stubby. He casually throws a wave over his shoulder as he and Rogers walk away. A soft chant of fight, fight, fight slowly builds momentum. Stubby hooks the collar of Brian's shirt and lifts him clean off his feet. When an idea springs into your head. Wait! Huh? 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 If I can get you a new vase, will you promise not to hurt Brian? Stubby thinks a moment, then drops Brian like a sack of potatoes. Only if I get it before my folks get home from Europe tonight. Brian slaps his hand to his forehead. (sighs) No problem. No problem at all. Okay, meet me under the bleachers with a vase at 3 o'clock sharp. Stubby pokes you in the sternum or you're both worm food. The bell rings. What? How are we gonna get a vase? Stubby throws an arm around Becky and they disappear into the crowd. Brian turns to you, face red with anger. A new vase? What were you thinking? You just signed our death warrants. Dude, you were dead already. I bought us some time? That's attitude's great, keep it up. Man up and pull your own weight. The attitude's great. Keep it up. Wow, I like this angry side of you, Brian. Now you're making fun of me? Boy, I made a mistake trusting you. No, you didn't, because I've got a plan. Brian perks up a little. You actually have a plan? Yeah, but we'll need some outside assistance. Claire's family is rich. Maybe she'll loan us the money to pay for a new vase? Don't forget, Allison's amazing artist. Brian slowly nods, getting on your wavelength. She might be able to make us a new vase. We can use the free period before lunch to talk to one of them in private. Oh gosh. Um, <sighs> too many decisions. Let's go with Allison. I don't even know. I don't even know. What, are you, what did you guys do? Allison feels like our best shot. Yeah, because Claire is so flaky and Andrew already like filled us. So I feel like the popular kids are not. Oh gosh, too many decisions. <laughs> Even if she can't make the vase, she'll probably know ways we can psych Stoey out. Well, Bailey, I trust you'll get through to her. Me? 
You mean we, yeah. Oh, now it's, now it's I trust you? Dude, before it was like, what are we gonna do? No, me? You mean we? Oh no, I think I've come down with a pretty heinous stomach bug. Brian kneels over and clutches his stomach. Oh, this will definitely keep me in the nurse's office for the rest of the day. You hitch up your backpack and turn to walk to homeroom. I'll see you later during free period. Right, good luck. Before you can say anything else, he's off and, ah, you freaking weasel. Looks like you're talking to Allison on your own. After your morning class is finished, you set off to find Allison. Your gut leads you to the art classroom. You find her crouched over a table, scrawling furiously on a sheet of paper. Hey Allison, what are you working on? Allison barely looks up from her artwork. It's nothing. She flips over the paper and slaps it on the table. For my eyes only. She glances up with a sly look. So, Saturday was interesting. Allison slouches. I got grilled by the cops all night. In Soviet Russia, pig grill you. Allison responds with a blank stare. You're better at running from cops and writing jokes about them. Ouch. But on the topic of my bad choices, Brian and I are kind of in a bind with Stubby. I heard about what happened. Brian really could have used your help, Allison. Me? I'm not Brian's friend. Whoa! I don't have any friends. I really want to say I wonder why, because every single one of these kids are getting on my last nerve, but we're gonna be like her. Like, aren't we friends? Well, Brian considers you a friend, and so do I. During detention? You said you wouldn't turn away from us on Monday, remember? Allison jumps off her stool. That was before the party. Hold it. I'm not following here. What about the party? Earth to Bailey. Allison's nostrils flare in anger. Seven minutes in heaven? Everybody's gossiping about it. But nothing happened. Since when has anybody let the truth get in the way of a good story? Apparently, everyone says we're in a love triangle. You, me, and Andrew. What? But what, should I have went to Claire so then it could have been like Bender? What is happening? Allison's eyes are wet with tears. It sucks to be gossiped about. Don't have regrets? What are we, re I don't even know what this means. They're just jealous? No, they're not. What are they jealous of? You need thicker skin? I don't even know, don't have regrets. Don't have regrets about anything that happened. I don't. Who cares what the rumor mill says? They're just bored teenagers with nothing better to talk about. I guess I can try to ignore them the way they've always ignored me. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I get what Claire was moaning about during detention. Being in the spotlight is like living in a pressure cooker. Forget the spotlight for a second. Try to help your new friend, Brian. I don't know. What are the social rules for something like that? What would old Allison do? New Allison just does nothing. What do you wish you could do? What would old Allison do? Allison squinches up her face in thought. She'd give Stubby a farmer's blow right to the face, yes. Farmer's blow? Allison plugs one nostril and forcibly snorts a glob of mucus out the other. It lands straight into the trash can at her feet. She gives you a wild grin. Ew. Well, that'd definitely catch him by surprise. Allison returns to her seat and flips over her drawing. You stare in amazement at the intricate self-portrait. 
Broken fragments of old Allison's face blend seamlessly with shards of her new face. You're an incredible artist. Thanks. That's nice to hear. How are you with pottery? Allison looks up from her drawing and shrugs. Pretty decent, but why? You saw that Ming vase at Stubby's house before it broke, didn't you? Allison nods. Think you can make a copy that looks like the real deal? Allison nervously rubs her arm. I'd love to pull one over on that scumbag. I don't know what I should do anymore. She bangs her head down on the table. Prioritize yourself? She doesn't know what to do. We don't, we're not gonna prioritize Andrew because that doesn't even make sense. Prioritize your friends? Mm, but you should always put yourself in. <laughs> friends. You didn't just get a boyfriend on Saturday. You got new friends too. And you don't seem the type who prioritizes a boyfriend over her friends. Allison traces the edges of her self-portrait. You're right. I don't want to be one of those girls. I can have the vase ready for you by the end of the day. Thank you. Yes. You leap over to hug her, but stop when she shrinks away. Sorry. Just don't let it happen again. You move to leave when Allison hands jerk forward to stop you. I've got an idea. I saw Bender screwing around in the gym earlier. If anyone knows how to survive a fight, it's him. You think he might be able to teach me some moves? <laughs> Can't hurt to ask. Would be good to know if things get bloody. We're gonna learn to fight with Bender. <laughs> All right, I'm game. Here's there now, so you should hurry. I'll have the full report to you by tomorrow. Allison is already too absorbed in her art to respond. You exit the art room and hurry to the gym. On your way to the gym, you swing by the nurse's office and convince Brian to join you. Brian hesitates at the entrance and throws you a worried look. This will toughen you up, I promise. You give him a smile that seems to boost his confidence. Fine, but after, I'm going right back to the nurse's office. You turn a corner to find Andrew and Bender squared up on the wrestling mat. What? Now pull me toward your laid leg and quit locking your knees. Cool it. It's a lot of shit to remember. <laughs> I don't know. It's easy enough for meatheads. Andrew and Bender straighten up at your arrival. Look who the cat dragged in. Minda walks close to you, brushing up against you. Yes. Meow. <laughs> what brings you to the gym? We need help. Two words, angry stummy. You two playing grab ass. <laughs> I like that one. I like it. I'm going to say two words, angry stubby, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> We wanted a chance to see you two playing grab ass. Brian shoots you a surprised look. We were? I was just showing Bender a few moves. Yeah, in case I ever get in trouble with Andrew's wrestler buddies. You heard about that? Andrew nods. Stubby's my friend, but he's also a beast. We hope one of you could teach us some moves. Hopefully to even the score a little. There's no time to show you much, but I can show you something at least. Bailey can go first. Brian plants his butt on the mat as you score up to Andrew. What? Like, I'm preparing to fight Stubby? <laughs> what is happening here? Okay, Bailey, spread your stance and keep your knees bent. Andrew guides you into position and your weight counters over your midline. Now I'm going to run at you and you just have to stop me. Sure, but when will I? Andrew bursts forward and lunges straight for you. Dodge. Dodge. Block. Let's block. Your hands shoot up to block Andrew's arm. 
Your palm stings as it strikes his knuckle, but you deflect the blow. Nice reflexes, but good blocking skills alone aren't enough. Andrew returns to his spot and beckons Brian over. All right, Rocky, square up. I personally feel a Greco-Roman style may be more effective at... Relax, or you're gonna be great. You think so? Brian puffs out his chest. <laughs> I agree, he's gonna make a great speed bag. Hey, enough from the peanut gallery. Let's go, Johnson. Brian reluctantly faces you across the mat. You're gonna fight Bailey. <laughs> now go, go, go. Andrew shoves Brian forward and he rushes you, arms failing. Uppercut? <laughs> Jab. You spring forward and aim a light blow at Brian's face. Brian instinctively bats you away but stumbles back. Impressive stuff, Bailey. Johnson, you could use some work. Bender slowly eyes you with a half smile. Yes. Keep on looking. Smooth moves, Bailey. You like what you see? You and Bender share a moment while Brian pauses to catch his breath. Prepare to meet your doom. Brian tears across the mat, but you easily sidestep him. He trips and retreats to his corner, stomping his feet. I can't do it. I don't want to hit Bailey. Andrew's face brightens. No, but I bet you could hit Bender. Me against that twerp? I'd kill him before he hits the ground. Think you could handle me instead? Bender rolls to his feet and strolls over, sucking his teeth. <laughs> Fine, but don't expect me to go easy on you because you're a girl. You and Bender face off while Andrew acts as referee. No fighting dirty. Looking at you, Bender. <laughs> he might pull out a knife. Eat my dick. Okay, Bender. Is that... Whoa! Okay, Bailey. Okay. What? Bender's eye grow huge just as Andrew shouts. Ready, set, fight. Be aggressive or fight smart? Be aggressive. You rush Bender without hesitation, catching him off guard. You duck low and slam against his waist, tackling him to the floor. What the hell? He tries to shake you off, but you grab his wrist and hold him in an arm bar. Had enough? Bender slaps the mat. Uncle, uncle. <laughs> you roll off him and stand up, smoothing out your clothes. Bender angrily scrambled, did he mess up? Wow, Bailey, you sure never really fought before. Wasn't that, impre wasn't that impressive? Winner by a landslide, Bailey. Brian and Andrew applaud as you wave your imaginary enduring fans. Couldn't have done it without a solid coach. You smile and nudge Andrew with your elbow. Oh, shit. We messed up. Bender massages his side and shakes his head. I'm keeping my eye on you, Bailey. Good. Sleep with one eye open. Bender gives you a smirk. I'm like, I feel like, I don't know. I'm not making the right decisions. Like, I'm going to nudge in Andrew. No, stop, stop. But then, like, Bender's giving me a smirk. Really terrific lesson. But I think I'll stick to hiding behind Bailey. Yeah, that's probably a smart move. The bell for lunch rings. Good luck. And don't forget to keep your guard up. Just don't do anything stupid. You wave goodbye and head off to eat lunch. As you walk down the hall, Bender hurries to catch up with you. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, hey. I've been thinking about Saturday. Yeah, me too. And I can't leave you hanging like that. Obviously, you're gonna want more Bender. <laughs> he gives you a sly grin. Yes, I'm loving this. And I just wanted to know when. Do I wanna get serious with you? Yes. This is my only chance. Or should I wait to get serious with someone else? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it's okay, I'm sorry. Why am I so into this story? 
I want you to be my boyfriend, Bender. I'm desperate. Take me. Take me now. You know, should I wait to get serious? No, because I don't want to. <laughs> Why did you say you said you ended up in a leisure suit with a girlfriend? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want that to happen to me. I think I'd like you to be my boyfriend. Oh, that's what you think, huh? There's a tense moment and then he breaks into a grin. I think you just won the dating lottery. You share a quick kiss. Are you going to lunch? Actually, I gotta go see my accountant. He hurries off down the hall. Let's talk later. You give him a wave and then head to the cafeteria. You settle at the table with your usual school lunch, tater tots, chocolate milk, and an extra sloppy, sloppy joe. Before you take your first bite, Donna abruptly arrives at your table. Look who I found. She fluffs her hair and gives you a broad smile. Hey, Donna. Slide over, Scooch, would you? Donna squeezes into the seat next to you. It's your second week at Shermer and you're already in a... Oh, how does she know this? And that's some kind of land speed record. How do you know that? Oh, I know everything. Speaking of which, I've got some major news. Donna lowers her voice, forcing you to lean into here. A little birdie told me things are heated between you and Stubby. That's one way of putting it. One of my sources just dug up some dirt on Stubby. Real bad stuff, you could use it to your advantage. Wait, are you talking about blackmailing him? Think of it as using all the tools in your toolbox. Problem is, this dirt is in Stubby's locker. That doesn't help me very much. Lucky for you, I'm not above a little breaking in and entering for a good cause. Donna stands up and tugs your arm. We should move quick. No, no. I don't I don't like Donna. I think you guys understand this at this point, and I don't like breaking into this guy's. I mean, we got a plan with Claire. Not Claire, Allison. No, this is too risky. No way. If we got caught, we'd be in some deep shit, Donna. Donna huffs, but quickly regains composure. Taking the high road. That's very respectable. I hope you don't regret it. She's always like trying to get us to do some shady stuff. Donna pushes her chair back and stands with a dramatic flourish. Enjoy your lunch, Bailey. She turns on a dime and leaves. You quietly finish your sloppy joe. The calm before the storm. That's it. Oh, okay. I thought that was the end of the chapter. Okay, 3 p.m. The hour of reckoning. You make the long walk to the bleachers. A crowd is gathered to watch the anticipated ass kicking. A wise guy whistles a funeral march as you approach. Brian is already there, pacing in a circle and reading a crumbled scrap of graph paper. What's with the graph paper? Oh, just making sure my last will and testament are, uh, is legible? My hand wouldn't stop shaking when I wrote it. Think I should leave my astronaut helmet to my little sister or my cousin? You know what? I'll just be buried in it to avoid estate disputes. No one's, no one's dying today. We're going to be like, I've got your back. No matter what happens, I've got your back. Thanks, but I'm just so nervous, I can't even think straight. What if I get a shiner? My mom will flip out. Oh, God, what if she wants me to homeschool? You grab Ryan by the shoulders and look him in the eyes. Take it easy. We'll both be okay as long as we stick together. I'm scared too, but I promise you this will all be over before you know it. You feel some tension release from Brian's shoulders. Thanks, Bailey. I really needed to hear that. The crowd goes silent as Stubby marches over with Becky and a few jocks in tow. Surprised you even showed. Maybe you're not as much of a chicken as I thought, Johnson. Thank you, sir. Uh, I mean, Stubby. Brian goes white as a sheet as the crowd ripples with laughter. Enough talk. Where's the vase? Right on cue, Allison arrives, cradling her freshly forged vase. You take the surprisingly convincing copy and hand it to Stubby. 
your mom will never know the difference. Stubby takes a vase and inspects it from all angles. He frowns and holds out his palm. It's wet with slick glaze. Wow, the world's freshest Ming vase. You think I'm stupid or something? Do I have to answer that? <gasps> Whoa, Stubby throws a vase down where it busts on the ground. See that vase? I'm gonna break you just like that. Stubby advances on you. Wait. You frantically look around the crowd for any distraction to delay your impending doom. You catch a sight of Claire leading a gaggle of popular girls into the crowd. Claire. You try to grab her attention, but she seems to actively avoid your gaze. The crowd chatters and gathers tighter. Their thirst for a fight is palpable. Stubby levels his sights on you, like he's gonna beat you up and you're a girl. You promise me a vase, and I don't see one. Guess someone's ass is getting kicked. Please just make it quick. Stubby rears toward you and Brian. Wait. You'll get in even more trouble. Let's all be friends. You're a coward. Hmm. Get in even more trouble. Stubby, this fight's only going to end badly for all of us. Not the way I see it. Being in a set isn't going to fix your mom's vase. It'll probably only get you into even deeper trouble. I very much agree. Stubby eagerly cracks his knuckles. This guy doesn't care about trouble. Nice speech, but it just pissed me off. Becky smirks at you and makes a throat slashing gesture. From the corner of your eye, you spot a figure darting across the football field. Hold on. Yes, to my rescue. Bender grinds to a halt inside your circle fight. Your fight circle, circle fight. Man, am I glad to see you. Bender gives you a quick smile, then squares up to Stubby. Like, yeah, he's about to let his girl get beat up. Are you stupid? Kick rocks, Bender. This doesn't concern you. Oh, but it does. You may not kick their asses. They've been training. But assuming you do, I have to take you on myself. Bender flicks at his switchblade. <laughs> I told you guys, he's like stabbing folks. And that's a fight I know you'll lose. Yes, Bender. Screw you, Bender. In a flash, Stubby lunges at Brian. The fight is on. What the heck is happening, guys? We're going to go aggressive. Before Stubby can plan his first move, you launch into an attack. You duck and rush him, wrapping your arms around his middle. Oh, <laughs> yes, you lead with your shoulder and throw Stubby off balance. Gravity handles the rest and sends Stubby sprawling into the dirt. Someone's ass is getting kicked today. Yours. The crowd looks on me with an almost wondrous admiration until you hear, Vernon! No! Enough. Vernon cuts to the crowd and grabs you by the shoulder. What the hell is going on here? Vernon locks eyes with you and grins with delight. Well, if it isn't Miss Goody Two-Shoes, why am I not surprised? He surveys the crowd. Bailey Johnson, Bailey Johnson, Bender, in my office now. His lips curve into a smile. I'd love to have a talk with the Breakfast Club. What? No, we're in trouble. Guys, this, this is so good. Guys, this is good. Like, I was, like, not coming into this thinking it was going to be this good. But it's been, like, what, 35 minutes? And this is really good. Really, really, really good. All right, let's see. Andrew, you got a lesson in self-defense from Andrew. Bender is now your boyfriend. I love it. All right, let's get our one gem. Let's see what's next. Episode is, are you going to be back in detention? <laughs> Your friendship with Andrew is put to the test when Larry Lester 
the kid he once bullied returns to school looking for an apology. But what does that have to do with my friendship with Andrew? Interesting. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode. I think this is probably like one of the most action-packed ones and a lot happened. A lot of decisions that seemed like they really affected and stuff. I'm like, I guess, I don't know. I'm leaning towards like, I don't like Claire. Like, I'm not even really interacting with her because I feel like my relationship with Bender would cause her to just say no whenever we need help. I don't know. What do you guys think? This is good. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.